Hey, what's up guys? Alan with Sonic Electronics doing some more tech support videos for you here. The goal of these videos is to help prevent you sending back new equipment that you feel is defective. 90% of the products that we actually get back that we test are actually found to have no problem. Behind me, this video that we're doing today is on amplifiers. This problem may actually look familiar to you. It's actually when you turn your volume up, your amplifier shuts off or goes into protect. You turn it down and it works. So if this is the problem you're experiencing, there's a few different things that you can check to narrow down what the issue is that may be causing your amplifier to shut off when you turn the volume up. 99% of the problem is typically related to a bad ground. In order to test that properly, we definitely recommend always having a multimeter. If you don't have one, I would suggest borrowing one, or you can pick up one that's like this. It's extremely cheap. It's under five bucks. It's always good to have in your toolbox. It's one of those tools you'll use over and over and over again anyway. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is take our multimeter and turn it on. And since we're gonna be testing DC voltage, we're gonna to wanna to go to DC volts 20. And with our power and our ground probe from our multimeter, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and test our voltage for power and ground at the amplifier. Now, as you can see, we actually have 13.69 volts. Now that's great voltage. You want to typically see anything anywhere from 11.5 to 14 and a half volts, depending on your charging system. Now, just because we have 13.7 volts doesn't mean that we don't have a problem. What you want to do is actually replicate the issue that you have. So with your power and ground probe on the terminal on the amplifier, you're going to want to go ahead and now watch the multimeter as you turn the volume up. Now, as you turn the volume up, if it's related to a power issue, you'll typically see a voltage drop. And like we said, 99% of the time, it's usually related to your ground. What's happening is if you've got a bad ground or a bad connection in the power circuit, as you turn the volume up, the amplifier has more of a demand on your electrical system. When it cannot draw the right amount of current needed for it to produce the output that you're looking for, the amplifier is gonna go into protect or actually shut off. So now you know you can actually go back and check your ground. Another problem, but not as common, would be something shorted in the speaker wire that's ran to either your subwoofer box or the speakers in your door. Of course, this is not a four channel amplifier, but the same concept applies. So let's say I just installed new speakers here and I either soldered or I used crimp terminals to go on here. And when I installed my speakers, depending on the vehicle that they're in, when this goes into the door, these terminals have the possibility of shorting out in the door. It can actually touch the metal, which would actually send the amplifier into protection or depending on the sensitivity of the protection circuit in the amp, it actually still might play, but then shut off. We actually have an example mocked up here just to show you we actually have a problem. And what we'll do is go ahead and turn it up. You'll see as we turn it up, the audio will cut out. If I turn it down, it plays. If I turn it up, it shuts off. It's cutting in and out. So you can obviously see there's an issue. So what we're gonna wanna go ahead and do is we're gonna wanna trace this back all the way to our box. Well, the other end of this is at our terminal cup. Oh, wow, what do you know? The silly installer actually left a pair of needle nose in the terminal cup, shorting out positive and negative. All jokes aside, that was just really to show you what would happen if you actually had a short where two speaker wires are actually touching some point. This sometimes happens when the wires could be frayed and touching at the terminal or frayed and touching at the terminal uh, cup at the box or even pinched or shorted throughout the vehicle. So as you can see, now that we've eliminated that, we'll go ahead and hit play again. And now it actually plays just fine and actually gets loud and you can actually hear the output. But that was just to give you an idea that even this particular amplifier, while there was a short presented to it, you still had audio. Now the final thing that we wanna show you and talk about today is actually the load presented to your amplifier. When you bought your amplifier, your amplifier actually had a specific spec. It probably said it put out X amount of power at four ohms, two ohms, and one ohm. 
So depending on how your system is wired or if it's wired correctly or wrong, you actually may have be presenting an impedance that's too low and the amplifier is not stable. So as an example, if an amplifier is only two ohm stable like this one here, but the load presented from the two woofers that are hooked up to it is actually wired at one ohm, that could be causing your issue. The actual amplifier might play for 10 or 15 minutes and shut off or shut off as the volume goes up because it's detecting something that's wrong. What's wrong is it's not stable at one ohm. So there's a way we can check that using our multimeter. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is disconnect our speaker wires coming off of our amplifier. And with them disconnected, we're now gonna take our multimeter and we're gonna actually switch this to impedance because that's what we're gonna be checking. We're gonna measure the impedance of the speakers that are connected to it. So there's this little horseshoe down here. We're gonna to wanna to go down to 200 on this particular meter. And with our two probes, we're gonna take our positive and negative probe and we're gonna probe our two speaker wires. Now you might think that 2.9 ohms is a little high. Like I actually know that I bought two ohm woofers and you're probably right. So that's 2.8 ohms. What you need to do first, because you need to factor in the resistance of these cables coming from your meter is actually short these together. It can take about 20 seconds or so. Wait till it levels out. So there you go, you can see we got 0.9. That's the resistance in the actual cables from the meter. So 2.8 minus 0.9, there you go, 1.9 ohms. Now you'll typically find that the range that you'll see this in on a two ohm woofer or speaker will be anywhere from 1.8 to about 2.2. That's gonna be your typical range. What we really wanna talk about is if you did meter this and you found that it's actually one ohm. That is where the problem will be. So this amplifier is two ohm stable, but if a one ohm load or a half ohm load is gonna be presented to this amplifier, this amplifier is more than likely going to just go into protection or cut in and out. It's actually doing its job. It's protecting itself. It wasn't designed to play that, that impedance. All right guys, as you can see, it can actually be a number of different things that can be causing the problem. Like we said, the most common, nine out of 10, is actually gonna be a bad ground. As you can see, without actually having a multimeter, it could appear that the amplifier is bad, but with further investigation and diagnostics with the meter and be able to run those tests that you just saw us do, you're able to narrow down and diagnose the actual problem. So it may not necessarily be the amp. So if you have any additional questions or you need any help actually diagnosing the amplifier, you kind of hit a wall, you're not sure, give one of our friendly techs a call. We'll be happy to assist you further in figuring out the issue. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this helped. I'm Alan, see you later.